How many of you have heard someone say, find your passion? Sounds like a really good idea, right? But what are the implications of the statement? Passion, the word highlighted there. For example, I think all of you have your own passions, and my passion is math. So, these are my early experience in mathematics competition. So, the first picture here is an eight-year-old version of me winning my first medal in Singapore. After this, I've joined more and more competitions because of this success. In my fifth grade, I represent my province to join a competition called OSN, and it's in Palembang. The picture here shows me and another 19 students winning the silver medal. From there, we're all selected to five different steps. From 30 students that win a gold and silver, nine students are chosen to represent Indonesia in joining this competition called IMSO. We train hard, everyone want to get the gold medal. And I know, miraculously, I won the gold medal. As the certificate of appreciation from the Indonesian government, I've been invited to the Jakarta governor office to meet Ahok. I think all of you know Ahok. And the picture there is me and all my teams going to the competitions in America. Since then, my passion for math started to develop, started to grow, and is getting better and better. But that's all for my elementary school. And I took a break around one year, not studying that hard like last time. And in my eighth grade, the school asked me to join a competition called also OSN, but on the secondary level. As you can see in the picture, I won a gold medal there. But it, it is hard work, effort, just to go for there. And through there, the same step as the elementary school, joining the International Math Olympiad. To join in its two step from 15 students, choosing eight students, and we are all represent Indonesia, represent this country to join in this competition in India. To get awards like this is, is very hard. We are trained around one month in a hotel, spending around seven until eight hours every day just studying math. I wonder how boring that is. But all of that hard work pays off and I got gold medal, and my, me and my team win the champion trophy. And this is the first time in history and my experience winning the champion trophy. So enough about all of that. Developing passion. So this is my two main ideas that support my topic. First, finding something like passion, assume that it already exists and is fixed. And second, mindset matters. Mindset is critical when it comes to passion. So, think about your childhood. Did your mother ever ask you to find something that you don't own? Sounds really silly, because it is. But why do we apply the same reasoning for developing passions in our life? The idea that we have passions lying somewhere deep inside us is very simplistic, very easy. This few remove responsibility for us as individuals. If you haven't found something yet, how can we be responsible for action? What evidence is there to really support that you are born with passions? How many of you are passionate about cartoons, video games as a child? How many of you still pursue those activities as an adult? When you say, find your passion, that means the passion is inside you. But it's just like any other characteristics. It can be nurtured, 
can be developed, but it can be killed or shut down too. Someone who finds their passion might not have worked hard to get it. But what is passion if it doesn't involve hard work? We all usually think that hard work comes out of passion. But what if it isn't that simple? What if hard work develops passion and they both just feed back into each other as a loop? Embracing the idea that we are born with passions is a natural quality. That's a part of you, just like your hair or eye color. Of course, all of us are constantly looking for those signals to determine what we are good at. Do we know what our skills is? And what do we do to judge our skills? This desire to find our calling leads to big expectations and bigger upsets us when we don't get the child prodigy signal that we hope for. Now, some of you might be saying, well, David, the idea to discover your passion just by getting medals or awards is far-fetched. But there are some other signals to determine what your talents are. Just think about it for one second. When you're successful or in a zone, at one moment, that's your passion. But experience differ and the world is not a level playing field. The perception of skills is biased heavily by the environment. Have you ever seen a big fish in a small pond? What you believe impact your performance. What you think your how your mind works and what you truly believe what your abilities are, it all impact your performance. Because this is the power of belief. It's the power of mindset. Michael Jordan, I know all of you know Michael Jordan. He said, I can accept failure. Everyone fails at something. No one is perfect. But I can accept not trying. In this statement, he alludes the role of mindset. Carl Dweck, who is famous at discovering the role of mindset, he said, the role of growth mindset can play in success, and the role of fixed mindset can play in failure. Basically, someone with a growth mindset, they think their mind is malleable and it can be developed throughout time with effort. But someone with a fixed mindset, they think their abilities are fixed. It can't be changed. They are just stuck with what they're born with. Someone with a growth mindset, they welcome challenges. They embrace criticism. And they find lesson in other people's success for their inspiration. But someone with a fixed mindset, they don't like challenges, criticism, because it may just reveal their weakness. They don't like to see other people succeed because it may challenge their place in a deterministic world. Michael Jordan is one of a person who has a growth mindset. He is rejected several times because of his height, but the mindset he has made him to never give up and just keep trying to overcome all that challenges he faced. And in this picture, you can see one of his quotes. He said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots, lost more than 300 games, and in 26 times, I've been trusted for a game-winning shot, and I miss. I felt over and over and over in my life. And that's why I succeed. Usually, positive experience develop your passion. Like, if you're success or you win, it develops your passion. But early failure often prevents you from developing it. But why? If we look at great people who have done great things and who is extraordinarily success, you can see a different pattern of greedy perseverance rather than simple instant success stories. Your attitude toward challenges and obstacles matters when developing your passion because passion is born out of growth 
and your attitude is the key to both. Thank you.